Hey guys, it's Aaron. So we get a lot of requests and, and we encourage it. I love hearing what you guys want to see models, what you want to see uh, done in SketchUp. And we get requests for things like workflows or for specific tool sets. Um, and sometimes it's just, how do you model a thing? So what we try to do as much as possible is take those requests and kind of mash them together. How can we make modeling a thing uh, involve a specific tool set or something like that? So today is a clear illustration of that. A request we've gotten several times is how to model lattice. Um, I guess I never thought about it. it. It seemed like a pretty straightforward thing to model, but I get if you're not really confident in SketchUp, uh, it could be a little tricky. That worked hand in hand though with uh, a couple things that have come up recently with solid tools. So we're gonna hop right in and take a look at modeling lattice and using solid tools to modify it. Here we go. Okay, so I have this little generic -y deck looking thing. Pretend this is a house, pretend this is a nice manicured yard, and this is a uh, freshly built deck. Um, I want to keep it simple. This is not the focus. So what we want to do is I want to build some lattice and fill in this space below. Pretty simple. Um, disclaimer, I, I don't know a whole lot about lattice, so I'm going to estimate some sizes. If they're incorrect, please bear with me. And when you make your own, feel free to make it whatever size you like. So having said that, let's, uh, let's jump in. So the bulk of a lattice is going to be a small piece of material, usually on a 45 degrees repeating, running one direction and then running another direction. So let's go ahead and create that piece first. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle on the ground. I'm going to make this rectangle um, like, I don't even know, uh, let's say like two inches by a quarter inch. It's not very big material, so something like that. All right, so I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to extend it up, you know, pretty far. Let's say, let's say like six feet. All right, I'm going to take that. I'm going to triple click to select all of that and I'm going to use rotate to rotate it right now to 45 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just snapping to 45 degrees because my 15 degree snap point is falling on 45. If you're, if you're doing this and you're not snapping to 45, you can just type in 45. That's fine too. And I'm going to click there. I have not at this point made anything a group. This is going to be repeating geometry, but I'm not yet bothering with, with cleaning that up or with, with uh, grouping that up. All right. I'm going to do a couple things before I create my copies that specifically is I'm going to go grab a line and I'm going to draw a line across like this. And then I'm going to grab the bottom and push it through. So I get that 45 degree cut. You'll notice I just ran the line long when I'm modeling in small spaces, rather than, you know, zooming in or whatever to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm right where I need to be. A lot of times I'll just run a line long like this, snap it, and then hit erase and just drag it across there. Um, Obviously, that's not the most precision. The most precision, of course, is going to be to make sure you're on the red axis and snap to the other edge. That works too. Uh, it's really just a preference thing. Sometimes I'm just in, in the zone, modeling, drawing, and uh, I just kind of run those long because it's quicker for me than to go in and, you know, zoom in to snap perfectly. All right, so there I have my one piece. I'm going to take it, I'm going to use Move, and I'm going to click the Modifier key, Option on Mac. Control on Windows, and I'm going to bring that over, I don't know, uh, let's say six inches. That's a good gap. And I'm going to say do that uh, 29 more times. So I'm going to type 29X. All right, there we go. That's half our lattice. At this point, I'm going to go select, select it all, right click, and make it a group. I'm not making it a component. Um, I'm not really worried about, I'm not going to have, yes, this is repeating material, but I'm about to merge this all together, both sides into one piece. So I'm not really worried about making a component. A group works just fine for this one. All right, so what I got to do is take this, make a copy, flip the other direction. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go rotate again. I'm going to get down on the blue axis, grab a corner. I'm going to hit the up arrow to lock there. And I'm going to option rotate 180 degrees. So again, I'm snapping there, but you could type that in if you needed to. All right, that looks pretty good. 
Now, I'm going to take this and I'm going to slide it over this way. Um, here's the thing. Now we can get as, as specific and tight as we want to. If I want a line that ends up, I could say bring this across until it's right here against that point. Um, I could line the ends up here where I could grab this piece by this corner and slide that right into this corner. Uh, the lattice I've seen really doesn't seem to be too well lined up anywhere particular. The poor part is just those pieces overlap. So that's the first part. So what I would do at this point, I have these two groups. Um, I would look at this and say, okay, how big do I need this to be? How long do I, what's the longest piece of lattice I'm going to run? So if I'm actually using pieces, maybe the hardware store sells them in eight foot lengths, I would just, you know, not go longer than eight. If I look at this and go, well, I want one piece to continuously cover all this. It's not quite long enough. So maybe what I'll do is select both of them and I will go to move and I'll grab this end right here, this point option. And I'm going to bring that and copy it down to the last piece right here, directly overlapping. So my groups are right on top of each other. They're perfectly lined up. At that point, I'm going to grab all four pieces, the four pieces of, of two, two in each direction. And I'm going to use my solid tools to click union. And, or actually I clicked outer shell. Union would do the same, but I'd have to do two at a time with union where outer shell will do all four and then just give me one group of all the geometry. So there we go. See that now it's all just one piece, one big piece like that. Uh, if you wanted to, you could save this part right now as a component to be used later on. So you could save this, save it out into its own file or, you know, save it into your components part of the template if you use it a lot. But this is what you'd actually want to make a component potentially and reuse. The issue with making the component, of course, is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take it and I'm going to grab it by maybe, I'll say this point right here in the middle. And I'm going to slide that point up right underneath my deck like that. Um, the issue is what we're about to do right now is we're going to come in and start cutting up this piece. If it were a component, I'd have to be very careful right now because if I have multiple copies of it and I cut one, they're all going to get cut. That's one of the reasons I'd left it as a group. All right, so again, I want to use solid tools. I could come in here and use intersect surfaces, like just create a, a face right here where I want to cut it and cut it, but there's so many overlapping pieces of geometry, and this is already a solid group. So this is one of those spots that using uh, solid tools is going to save me a lot of time. So I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm going to use, what I want to do is I want to cut this off at the edge of the deck. So I'm going to hover over here, hold down shift and just pull a nice big rectangle like this. That rectangle covers the whole side and I'm just going to pull it out, triple click, make it a group and then say, subtract that geometry from this geometry. And that's just going to chop it off. Boom, right there on the edge. See? Important point, if I do want to do this kind of work, like I said, it's easier. It's definitely easier than going in and manually breaking a bunch of geometry, but you do have to make sure that the rest of your geometry is grouped. So as I look, as I do this, if this back here wasn't in its own group, this geometry would merge with it. Fortunately, I put it in its own group like I should, and now I know I can just grab this, make it a group, and then say subtract that group from this piece, and boom, it's going to cut it all off right at the edge right there. Now, remember, I did make this kind of an arbitrary size, so it is going through the floor too. So make one more rectangle, this time underneath, pull it down, triple click to make that a group. And then again, just subtract that from my main lattice. Ooh, that's pretty nice. Well, that looks awesome. Let's go one step further. Let's run some lattice up here. You can see there's a little bit of a, little, little bit of a uh, hill right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this piece right here. I'm going to go to rotate. I'm going to rotate on the x-axis like that. And I'm going to modify our key to copy and just rotate a piece around 90 degrees. Like that. That looks good. But I want to cut it right here, right? Because it's, so it's sticking, it's not sticking below, but it is if I peek my head inside, it's cutting into the, my house and my hill here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and create a line that goes from here, drop that straight down to where it hits that, the bottom of the hill. I'm going to come down to right here. All right. 
And now what I need to do is make a solid out of those lines that cuts off the rest. If this piece were a solid, which it's not, this group is not a solid, I could just cut that. Since I have to make my own solid, what I'm going to do is, uh, right now, I'm just going to take this one, temporarily hide it, and then I can see my lines. Here's my lines, so it's really easy for me to just go click around, click around, click over here. I don't, have to be, I don't even have to be very accurate with this. I just have to get a shape that covers up what I want to get rid of. Then I can push pull, push pull, triple click, make a group, and then subtract that again from this piece. Done. And one last thing then, well, almost last thing, I can say unhide last to bring that back. I only use hide temporary like that. All right, last piece. I'll grab this. Option copy that straight across. Over here. Oop, I think I, I got to just tuck that back in like that. And there you go. Pretty, pretty quick and easy lattice work using solid tools. Like I said, that was a suggestion. We've had requests for solid tools and requests for lattice work, and the two just kind of perfectly, no, I didn't intend that to be a joke, but they mesh together, not unlike lattice. Um, hopefully you liked that. Hopefully that helped you out. If you did like it, go ahead and click like down below, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here, and you'll be notified of each and every one if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, and I keep saying this, leave us comments down below. This video is a direct response to requests that we've had. We like making these videos a lot. Like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.